day and welcome back to the Weedy Garden. This is a true story. Not even the names have been changed. So I'm driving home from my mate Ben's place. You know, the guy that showed me how to catch and breed those lactobacillus bacteria. Soil bacteria, the ones from my first video. The ones that poop and fart and feed my veggies. I'm fairly new to this area. See, I moved here from Denmark about two years ago, so I'm still finding my way around the place here in northern New South Wales, Australia. So anyway, I'm heading back from Ben's place when I take a wrong turn down Pynchon Road, just outside a little village called the Channon. About 50 metres up the road, I realise I'm heading in the wrong direction, so I turn into a driveway to a farm to make a U-turn and I notice a sign in the driveway that says the Permaculture Research Institute. Hang on a second, let's just go back in time about 10 days and I just released my first ever YouTube video and suddenly my feed on YouTube is full of gardening videos and suggestions about permaculture. What is a food forest? I had myself a mango maca smoothie in my hand, so I sat down, I clicked on play, and I started to watch. What is a food forest? Well, we're all quite familiar with forests, and forests as an ecosystem, with great diversity of plants, animals, and fungi, all harmonizing together and interreacting in many, many niches and layers, designed by nature, maintained, as a system in perfect balance. I was watching this video and thinking, wow, what an interesting guy. Well, imagine that as a system that produces food. The majority of the elements in that system being productive. That's a food forest. I was thinking about planting a food forest myself, actually. So by understanding how nature designs forest systems so they're self-maintaining, self-replicating, we can model that system with productive species so that we can produce food in the most sustainable way with the minimum amount of input for the maximum amount of output anywhere in the world. That's a food forest system that we can actually design and work with in long-term and permanent situations. First of all, I thought he was gentle, connected, articulate and full of knowledge. Then I thought, wow, I'd love to meet this guy and see his garden. In the second video I saw of his, he mentioned that he was in northern New South Wales. That's where I am, I thought. So he has to be somewhere within 20,000 square kilometres. Hmm. That's a pretty big area, actually. Well, the phone rang, and that was the last that I thought about this interesting gentleman with the English accent and a YouTube channel with a farm somewhere in the neighbourhood. So back in real time, and I grabbed my iPhone to check out this guy's channel. There it is. Zaytuna Farm. I look out the window and think, what amazing synchronicity. That just puts me in the right place at the right time. I look again on my iPhone to check out this guy's name, Jeff. I gotta remember his name. Jeff. Jeff, Jeff. At this point, I still had no idea who this fellow was, but I was just about to meet one of the most prominent, respected, and sought after permaculture teachers on the planet. When I came in, there was people all over the place, and each one had inspiration on their face. And then a young woman comes up to me and says, Hi, you right, can I help you? And then I say, yeah, I'm looking for a guy called Jeff. And she says, you mean Jeff Lawton? And I say, yeah. And she says, yeah, he's our teacher. And I say, he's a teacher? 
And she says, Yeah, it's a permaculture school. We're in the middle of a course at the moment. And I say, Okay. Then I saw the sign and I thought, I didn't need to put on my shoes. I thought I'm going to get one of those signs for my garden. So when I came in the first time, he was sitting right over there having lunch with a bunch of young students. Hmm, I thought, nah, maybe I should come back another time. But then a young fellow said, Just a nice guy, mate. Just go in. And I said, OK. Then I proceeded. And at this point, I'm feeling a little bit embarrassed that I'm just barging in on Jeff like this. But I just went over and I said, G'day, Jeff. You know what? The funny thing was, he recognised me straight away from my YouTube channel and he said, G'day mate, it's a weedy garden guy, how are you? I didn't know you were going to turn up, it's good no. to see you. And I said, I didn't even know I was going to be here Jeff, I took a wrong turn in your driveway mate and here I am. You turned up just at the right time, just finishing lunch and we can get out there and have a look around. And it gets me away from the students actually, we can have a quiet conversation. Yeah, we share a bit of the yield with bats, but we've got enough that they can't get it all, and neither can we. <laughs> so they get a bit, and we get most. There's one over there. Kind of oversupplied with papaya. You're gonna get wet. Mulberry. In August, when the mulberries are in full fruit, I must eat a hundred mulberries before breakfast, straight off the tree. I never miss. <laughs> yeah. Permaculture is an ethical design science. It's the science of design anchored in ethics, where we connect all the disciplines together to provide all the needs for humanity in a way that's beneficial to life on earth in all its forms. So it actually improves the environment, it strengthens the environment, it gives the, the environment integrity. They can all be designed to be beneficial in ways that are beyond even the function of nature. Because of our ability to apply human intelligence in a harmonic way using the lessons of nature, we can actually improve on nature itself. And that is something that most people have no idea about. But once they're switched onto it, it becomes a terminal activity for life. You can't give it up, you can't, you can't let it go. It, it's, it's addictive because you have something really beneficial to engage in. And that's all we're ever after, a meaningful life. And if you're engaged in a meaningful life that benefits nature itself, and we stop all this foolish behavior that's destroying the planet, then you've got to feel good about it. I mean, that's an obvious thing. And, uh, and now we're in a, a radical food forest that's about 18 years old. <laughs> and, uh, and it's sort of caring for itself. It's functioning like a forest with an assembly of plants that would never naturally occur. But the natural systems and living elements in there don't care about that because nature has no prejudice. It has no, it, it has no preconceived idea of how it should or shouldn't be. You know, it, 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 it doesn't make assumptions that this is the assembly that should be in place. If the functions are assembling organic material in a way that benefits the soil, that's it, it doesn't matter. So when we put most of the elements together that are gonna give us our supply lines, we've really won, won the jackpot because there's no better way to live and there's no healthier way to engage with nature itself. Show you some fungus. See this one-year-old piece of wood here? Right, that was dropped last year. Well, it, it may have already gone, but there's fungus fruiting everywhere, look. <laughs> Who needs a chipper when you've got fungus? Well, that's pretty gorgeous, actually. Slightly harder bit of wood, different fungus. I could work in the food forest forever. I could just go in and never come out. We're gonna get wet if we're not here. Let's head this way in the, in the, under the forest. 
in a thunderstorm. <laughs> Custard apple, tree tomato. Yeehaw! Wow! Oh, like fresh food is like the difference between fresh fish and stale fish. You definitely are what you eat. And if you don't know what you eat, you don't know who you are quite often. You've lost that connection. We identify ourselves by the produce that sustains us and we should never lose sight of that. Yeah. Oh, I'm totally broke, man. A, a tour in the middle of a thunderstorm while yeah. the start of one. Yeah, I've got to go and get dry, change my clothes so I can carry on teaching, all right? Cool. No worries. Thanks a lot, man. All right. That night it rained and rained and rained and I couldn't get any sleep at all. Not because it was raining, but because I couldn't stop thinking about creating a food forest on the hill besides the weedy garden. So I waited a couple of days until Jeff had finished with his course and drove back out there. And I said, Jeff, would you like to come out to my garden and help me design my food forest? You know what he said? He said, Yeah, sure, I'd love to. <laughs> Excellent. Hey, high five. See <laughs> where it goes. <laughs> okay. So just remember, you want wonderful, colourful, natural, clean, organic food that's going to give your body its full potential. When your body's working, your mind is working. And when your mind and your body are working, guys, your heart is working. And when your heart is working, well, you're kind of connected to everything. So this is the real paradise on earth. This is, this is really the way to do it. So remember to go and check out my Patreon page. I'll be putting videos of Jeff and I up there and Patreons, they'll get a $100 discount on the course tuition fee if they decide to do the PDC, the Permaculture Design Certificate through Jeff's online course. So go check out Patreon. And if you're a subscriber, remember to check the little notification button so you get a little notification whenever I upload a new video. Okay, so hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a nice day and I'll catch you later.